Now, taking a look at the product property of exponents, we're going to understand it as best we can. So let's start with 2 cubed times 2 to the power of 4. Okay. Now, 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, isn't it? And 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, four of them. So if I do 2 cubed, that's 2 times itself 3 times 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times itself 4 times. So my question to you is, how many 2's are being multiplied here? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them. So this can now be written 2 to the power, 2 to the power of 7, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? Um, if I had 5 squared times 5 to the power of 6, 5 squared is simply 5 times 5, isn't it? 5 to the power of 6 is 5 times 5 times 5. That's 3 of them, and then 4 of them, 5 of them. 6 5s multiplied by each other. So altogether, how many 5s are being multiplied in this expression? How many 5s altogether? 1, 2, 3. There are 8 of them, right? So this would can also be written 5 to the power of 8, of course, which is a very big number, isn't it? It's a big number. Um, so, you know, in your homework, you, you're just, I mean, 2 to the power of 7 is also uh, big. It's, it's actually 64 times 2, 128, I think this is. Okay, pretty sure you can check that. Um, so, you know, you're not supposed to, you don't need to calculate these. Just leave them as they are with a parallel, because you might have something like this. Okay, so we need to understand the pattern. Now, if I was doing 3 to the power of 20 times 3 to the power of 100, that's 3 times 3 times 3 and so on, right? 20 of them here, and then 3 times 3 times 3 and so on. 100 of them here. So it's 20 threes times 100 threes. How many threes are being multiplied altogether? 120, right? Isn't it? So that should be 3 to the power of 120. Or even better, we need we should see the pattern. Three, 2 cubed times 2 to the power of 4. 3 plus 4 gave 7. So this could have been written 2 to the power of 3 plus 4, which would have given us simply 2 to the power of 7. 5 squared times 5 to the power of 6 gave us 5 to the power of 8. Now we could have just added 2 and 6, so we could have calculated this as such. 5 to the power of 2 plus 6 which would have given us 5 to the power of 8. This one we should just write it 3 to the power of 20 plus 100. Okay, So these this 20 number and the 100 number are small. They're both exponents. They have a plus between them. And that is simply 3 to the power of 120. Okay, So that's that page. And then, of course, if we had letters, it's the same scenario. I mean, a uh, cubed times a squared. A cubed times a squared is simply a cubed because is a times a times a, three of them, see? A squared is simply a times a. So how many a's are being multiplied? One, two, three, four, five. So we can just write this, of course, a to the power of five, or a to the power of three plus two. So if I had a to the power of 15 times a to the power of 13, what would the answer be? 15 a's times 13 a's. That's how many altogether? Well, it's a to the power of 15 plus 13, which of course is a to the power of 28, right? So what do you think the general rule is then? If I had a to the power of m times a to the power of n, that would be, can be written a to the power of, the product property is, that's a to the power of m plus n. So if I multiply by the same base, Okay, multiply by the same base, then it's that base uh, with the uh, exponents added. Now, you got to note, of course, that you have to have the same base. I mean, you know, like if I had 3 squared uh, times, you know, 5, um, let's say, uh, squared, that's not... 3 to the power of 2 plus 2, is it? Or I mean, this is this is simply 3 squared is 9, 
5 squared is 25, and when I multiply those guys, I get 225. So it's not, you know, 3 to the power of 4, which would be 81. It's not uh, 5 to the power of 2 plus 2, which would be, you know, 625. So if we have different bases, see that? This is a 3, this is a 5. Different bases, we certainly cannot apply any exponent rules. We just have to calculate each one out individually, right? So if I had, obviously, 3 squared times 5 squared, that would be just 9 times 25, and you calculate that out individually, okay? You cannot add the exponents in any way, okay? So... Okay, now we'll do page three and four. Have a look at page three. We'll do these examples. And page four here, we'll do these examples. So, page three, three if you had parentheses to the power of four times parentheses to the power of three, what do you think you do with this? Write it down. Parenthesis power of four, wouldn't that be parenthesis times itself four times, for example, right? And what about the parenthesis to the power of three? Wouldn't that be parenthesis times itself one, two, three times? Okay. So what? what's another way to write this? Parenthesis times itself how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be parenthesis to the power of what? to the power of 7, right? And that's just like having this situation, 2x inside a parenthesis to the power of 4 times 2x inside a parenthesis to the power of 3. This power of 4 is applied to the 2x, and this power of 3 is applied to the 2x. In other words, this power of 4 is applied to the parenthesis, and this power of 3 is applied to the parenthesis. So you have, you know, this power of 4 on the parenthesis means you have 1, 2, 3, 4 parentheses. And then the power of 3 on this parenthesis means you have 1, 2, 3 parentheses. Right? Does that make sense? And then what do you put inside these parentheses? Just your 2x, right? So that's one way to do this. Okay, and then we have 2x times itself how many times? It's 2x times itself, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 2x to the power of 7, and that's the answer there, right? So we just leave this answer like that. And how about this one? 7p to the power of 10 times 7p to the power of 5. What does that give you? Well, 7p to the power of 10, this per exponent is on the parentheses. So it's like 10 parentheses times each other, right? And then this 5 is on this parentheses. So that's like 5 parentheses times each other. So how many is that, does that make? So you could write them out if you want to, but isn't that going to be 5 or 10? of these 7p's times 5 of these, so that's going to be how many 7p's multiplied by each other? 7p to the power of 10 plus 5, right? That's the, the quickest way, right? Or 7p to the power of 15, right? Now, how about this? x plus 4 squared times x plus 4 to the power of 3, x plus 4 cubed. x plus 4 to the power of 2 times x plus 4 to the power of 3. Now again, that's the same thing inside both parentheses. So x plus 4 squared is just like x plus 4 times x plus 4, isn't it? And x plus 4 cubed is x plus 4 times itself three times, right? So we have x plus 4 times itself one, two, three, four, five times, right? So this whole thing becomes x plus 4 to the power of 5. Okay, and of course, we all we could have done a quicker way. We could have just said, well, that's just x plus 4 to the power of 2 plus 3. Or x plus 4 to the power of 5, right? Because it's the same thing inside both parentheses. So press pause and do this one yourself. y minus 3 to the power of 8 times y minus 3 to the power of 6. What does that give you? Press pause and do that one yourself. 
So that would be y minus 3 to the power of what? 8 of these guys times 6 of these guys. 8 plus 6. How many y minus 3's times each other? 14 of them. y minus 3 to the power of 14, right? And now on to page 4. What about this one? m squared n times m n squared in parentheses. Press pause and do that one yourself and you may make a mistake on it but that's okay. That's okay because then it'll help you learn, right? So press pause and do this one yourself. And I want to ask you this question. Do we have the exact same thing inside both parentheses? Yes or no? In the last examples we did have the exact same expression inside both parentheses. 2x, 7p, 7p, x plus 4, x plus 4, y minus 3, y minus 3, right? But do we have it this time? These aren't the same thing, are they? So it's not that simple. m squared, by the way, because the squared is on the m, that is m times m, right? So we have m times m times n, and then because this squared is inside the parentheses, not on the outside, it is only applied to the n, not this other m. So this is m times n times n. So please write this down and understand the difference between the difference with having an exponent inside a parentheses. Okay, when the exponent was outside the parentheses, like parentheses to the power of four, we could you know, multiply the parentheses. But when it's inside the parentheses, it's a different thing altogether, right? So we basically just have m times m times n times m times n times n, right? And and you can just simplify that. How many m's are being multiplied? Okay, one, two, three. So that's m to the power of three, right? How many n's are being multiplied? One, two, three. So n to the power of three, and then that's the answer. The answer. So we cannot do an exponent trick. We can't add any exponents, really. We just have to kind of write it out and then simplify it, okay? So press pause and do this one yourself. a cubed b times a b cubed. Press pause and do that one by yourself. See what you get, and then we'll go over it. Okay, I hope you press pause and try it. I'll do it now. So a cubed, this exponent of 3 here is inside the parentheses. In fact, there isn't any exponent outside the parentheses, so we don't do anything with that. We don't multiply any parentheses. Now the a, the cubed is just applied to the a, so that's a times a times a, right? So we have parentheses a times a times a times b. So that's the first one. And on this one we have parentheses a, and then the b cubed means the 3, the exponent of 3, is just applied to the b. So it's a times b times b times b, and that's it. And this cubed is not applied to this a because it's inside the parentheses and it's just kind of touching or, or applied to the b. So it's b cubed. And then you just simplify this expression. And if you want, you can write it without parentheses because it's just a times a times a times b and then times a times b times b times b. What does that give us? 1, 2, 3, 4 a's multiplied by each other, a to the power of 4. And 1, 2, 3, 4 b's multiplied by each other. So it's a to the power of 4 times b to the power of 4, right? And this one, a to the power of 7 times b to the power of 5. And then a squared times b. What do we do with this one? Press pause and simplify this one. Okay, I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'll do it now. So again, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Um, I mean, the surefire way is to just write it out. A to the power of 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 A's. 
b to the power of 5 is 5b's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And then we have a squared, which is 1, 2 a's. And then we have b, which is just 1b, right? And then you just count the a's and count the b's and then simplify it, write it with exponents, right? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 a's here, and then 2 a's here, that's 8 to the power of 7 plus 2, 9. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 is 6 b, so b to the power of 6. And of course, there's another way, if you wanted to, you could have written a to the power of 7 times a squared, if you want, and then b to the power of 5 times b. And b by itself is just b to the power of what? b to the power of 1, right? So this would be a to the power of 7 plus 2, a to the power of 9, and this would be b to the power of 5 plus 1, or b to the power of 6. So you could do it that way if you like, but I think this writing it all out is, is kind of informative because it really gets you to visualize what's going on and you learn it a little bit better. So press pause and do this one. a to the power of 10 times a squared times a to the power of 0. Okay, I'll do it now. a to the power of 10 is a times itself 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 3, 4, 5. Okay. a squared is 2 a's. And a to the power of 0 is, in fact, what? The number 1. Okay. So, this is. 10 a's and 2 a's, that's 12 a's times each other, then times 1, that's just a to the power of 12 times 1, or a to the power of 12, right? Of course, the quicker way to do it is, you could do this together, and that would give you a to the power of 10 plus 2, okay, times a to the power of 0, or a to the power of 12 times a to the power of 0, and then you could multiply these and get a to the power of 12 plus 0 or a to the power of 12. So that's another way of doing it. So press pause and do this one. r to the power of 4 times r squared times r. Okay, hope you pressed pause and tried it. So I'll do it now. One way is r to the power of 4 times r to the power of 2. You could just do that first. That's r to the power of 4 plus 2 or r to the power of 6 but you still have times r, right? Now this r here is the same as r to the power of 1. And this is then r to the power of 6 plus 1, r to the power of 7. So that's the answer, r to the power of 7, right?